Right. So, um, this is coffee physics. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, so, I, I would consider myself an amateur scientist. I've got no... I did it at school. <laughs> Generally speaking, I did it at school. Um, but, yeah, not um, particularly... Um, uh, not you know I did physics at school and uh, I did it as part of a degree I think did I yes I did um, mechanical electronic engineering degree so the, the it was involved in that as well if my eyes look like they're not looking at the screens because I'm doing it with a phone where the camera's actually there but the screen's there <laughs> um, right I think I've cracked it. <laughs> I'm making no claims as to whether this actually is true or not, but I think, and I'm not going to do any mathematics at all, right? This is purely based on um, YouTube uh, videos, which are done by, well, I would say reputable people. I mean, these people have got quite a following. And um, so this is a bit, and it's not just one video, it's like a lot of people, uh, including physicists, are explaining why. Um, the uh, um, how electromagnetism works and how gra uh, uh, time dilation works to give us gravity. The reason why this is important is because I'm not seeing anybody tying these together because you'll have to excuse it's a bit cold. Um, because and you can see um, there's a lot. If I put in, um, let me just do it here so you can see. Uh huh. And if I put in uh, YouTube, electromagnetism re relative, can you see that? You know, you can't see it. There's a light shining on the screen as well, which doesn't help. Um, maybe I'll edit that out. I don't know. Um, but basically, where is it? There's a the search there. Oh, no, you can't see it, can you? Because the light's shining on it. There. YouTube, electromagnetism relativity, right? And then you come up with a rake of videos that explain basically how... Um, you're using special relativity, so this does the length contraction thing, and the reason why it works apparently is because, um, in a nutshell, um, the electrons are moving in the wire, and the um, but the, uh, the 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 protons aren't; they're fixed essentially. I'm cutting out an awful lot, but that's essentially it. And from the point of view of a um, electron that's uh, um, from a point of view of an electron right it's seen as if it were it's seen the wire and uh, the I'm just trying to think now would the electron be moving or not let's assume it's moving so you've got it oh yeah because it's in a wire isn't it so the electrons moving down the wire right and it sees the electrons its mates as if it were they'll be moving together, I guess. And so it doesn't see any length contraction because it's effectively stationary in its own time of reference, in its own frame of reference, I think. But the protons from its frame of reference are moving the other way. And because they're moving in the other way, SR means you get length contraction, which means that then you get a density variance between the electrons and the, uh, and the protons, which then causes a electric field from the point of view of the electron particle that's whizzing past um, and that causes a density change between the, the the protons and the electrons in the wire which then causes length contraction you see and from the point of view of the of the electron that's going down another wire next to it I guess or, or you know you're in a magnetic field are you? I'm still trying to understand it anyway that's the, the point is is that I don't need to understand it because there's plenty of videos that explain it and it, it, you know when I'm looking at it <laughs> not now when I'm trying to explain it but when I'm watching it and uh, so you have things like let me show you okay this is uh, which one's this one silence asylum and this guy he, he really tries to make it you, uh, you recognize this guy here and he says I'll exaggerate everything for the rest of the video so you can see what's happening in the lab frame, the squirrel is moving. 
so it's contracted along that direction. Right. Everything in the wire is fine. It happens to be neutral in the spring. Yeah, because you've like got the before, same number of protons the magnetic and electrons. Field around the wire the wall. exerts a magnetic force on the squirrel, repelling it away. Right. In the clone frame, things look a little different. The squirrel and electrons are stationary, oh. so they're not contracted anymore. Now that the positive bits are moving, they are contracted. See? That means this part of the wire has a net charge. Right. Density. Charge may be invariant, but space is not. Charge density is the amount of charge divided by the space that charge occupies. In our case, we're measuring that space as a distance. The electrons have expanded and the positive bits have contracted, which hmm. means they occupy a different amount of space. Right. Their density has changed. Right. So Each then you get a net charge. The has a net positive charge. Right. Net positive According charge. According to Gauss's law, that means there's an electric field. If there's an electric field, the Lorentz law tells us there's an electric force. Bingo, bango, we've got a force. Right. So basically, he's saying what he just said, of course, <laughs> which is that um, you can explain electromagnetism using special relativity. You don't need an actual magnetic field, that it's an electric field that we're actually witnessing here. We're rich, we've got. Uh, protons and electrons and squirrels in his case right and uh, so this is this is causing uh, the attraction that we call magnetism but it isn't actually it's electric fields right and we just see a, a magnetism and from our perspective from the macroscopic effect right we are seeing uh, a quantum effect if essentially a quantum level um, because we're talking about electrons and we're talking about protons uh, that's a quantum event uh, uh, these are quantum particles, but it's having a macroscopic effect, isn't it? I mean, kind of everything does. I mean, I'm talking to you. I'm a physical physical person. My body is made up of um, atoms, and uh, you know, like, well, it's made up of organs, and those organs are made up of molecules, and those molecules are made up of atoms, and so on and so on. So underneath it all, it's like it's all quarks. Okay, some are up, some are down. <laughs> you know, so you know, and I'm talking to you now. I'm. I'm this is a macroscopic effect as a result of, um, you know, the fact that I'm a, a, a complex system that's made up of subatomic particles, essentially. But the difference with this is, it's a direct relationship. You then have electrons and protons, and they have a macroscopic effect by their own existence. This isn't a, a complex system like a human being. This is inside the wire. And these are subatomic particles that are having a macroscopic, a direct macroscopic, I can't even bloody say it, a macroscopic effect. We can see it. <laughs> uh, electrons are subatomic particles, and so are protons, and they exert a force on, on, on a magnet. Right? Macroscopic effect. We can see it. <laughs> I can't bloody say it. Anyway, so there you go. So that's a quantum, that's linking quantum physics, in a very roundabout way of course, linking quantum physics with uh, special relativity, directly, because you've got quantum particles and they're using special relativity to provide that macroscopic effect. So that's tied them together. And they're probably, there's some, there's, there's, he actually started doing some maths on that as well, you see. So there we go. Right. Now. This is the link. I think anybody who's done this research will probably watch this video because it's very visual. And so we're talking about this is uh, specifically Eugene, I don't know what his name is. Um, let's see. So if I can. The mass of the Earth warps space time. Right. So this is the link. What we've got here, right, is time dilation. And what we're doing here. Let me see the thumbnail. You can just, can't you? Um, what we're seeing here is basically showing, let me just, I'll leave it playing and I'll probably mute it off as stuff. Right, let me mute it off. And so what we're seeing here is, you know, this is showing, the vertical axis is, obviously we can see clocks, the vertical axis is time. So what it's saying is, as, you know, like we basically got more distant from the mass, we get uh, faster time, which is GR, yeah? Time dilation, gravitational time dilation, right? And it's due to the mass, okay? And uh, so what we have there, uh, let's skip a bit, sister. It's a woman. I think it's a simulated voice, but there we go. And so they're saying, okay, this is how you get the, um, 
Yeah, because you get the you can see the two arrows, right? The graphics are actually very good on this. But what you get is because this outside one is experiencing faster time, then that turns it. Now, if this was physical, it'd be like a boat turning in the water. Why am I doing stuff off camera? It's like a boat turning in the water like that. You see, it did it right. But this isn't. This is time, and this is where you have to understand what's being displayed in the concept. Right, as time passes, the but this this yellow bauble is getting closer to the Earth. Right, that's what's actually happening. Right now, that's a spatial object, but it, it's twisted like that. But you've got to remember that the horizontal axis is time. Okay. And this is like, I mean, obviously that's like the same size as the bloody earth. So it's not, you know, but what it's basically saying is, is different. Uh, it's not a force as such. It's just following the curvature, you see. And so that's the gravitational bit. It's following the curvature and that gives you gravitation, right? So this is not, uh, although they're uh, talking about the mass distorting space time, right? Which is GR, of course. They're saying that gravity per se is a, is, is, is a macroscopic effect uh, of, uh, the, um, of, of the actual time dilation. In other words, there's no, there's no force involved. It's just the way it works because the, uh, the planet is warping space-time. And as the planet, as if it were, goes through forward through space-time, right, you've got to be very careful about what you're actually seeing here right because what's happening here is the vertical axis isn't it's showing things moving upwards but we won't perceive that what we perceive as as is time passing right so if i was to move my finger right towards the earth like that in this diagram it would go up like that because the time is that way right so whilst i'm physically going that right because the time chart as if it were it, it means it's just an angle. So what we would see with that barbell is we wouldn't see, I mean, it's obviously grossly exaggerated, but we wouldn't actually see that barbell kind of turning and going up like that. No, what we'd see is moving towards the earth mass. That's what we would see, us perceiving time as being this uh, linear, ever go forward thing, right? And that's what we see. So we perceive things moving towards, well, it's the center of mass, isn't it? Obviously, it's the center of mass of the planet right that's what we will see right now why is this important and why does it tie into the electromagnetism SR thing is it it's because this is whilst it's using the mass it's obviously dealing with the mass of the planet it's not having any kind of uh, secondary effect there is no force of gravity it's just an effect of the passage of time in GR right so this is this is where we don't actually have like a graviton or anything like that there's no there's no particle involved with the gravity itself it is the distortion of space time right so the the closed loop of this is to actually have somehow how special relativity give you that distortion in space time and if we can link those two things together right then that means you've got the link between quantum physics and SR in the electromagnetism and the wire, right? You've got the link between gravity, the, what was called the force of gravity, and uh, something which is actually just a time dilation effect. So no particles, right? No gravitons, okay? Now, you just need to have the link between the time dilation effect and SR, and then that means you've linked everything together. You've got quantum physics then linked with GR through SR. And if you can demonstrate that, theory of everything, isn't it? Don't know if it'll work, and I need to look into that link. And obviously there's a whole raft of mathematics which is going to fill the world. <laughs> um, but basically this is, this is what it is. This, is. this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah? So, when I do do that, it will be on coffee physics, whatever that is. <laughs>